Lists are vital to the Android UI. We use columns and rows everywhere in our apps. But to make these layouts more dynamic and delightful, grids can sometimes serve as a better alternative, especially when supporting different window sizes across devices. Consider this example. We have our usual column listing all podcast episodes, each taking up the full width. However, when we rotate it or view it on a larger device, the item's full width is stretched out and doesn't look very delightful. For a better experience, we could replace this with the lazy grid and ensure we have more than a single column when there's enough room. Lazy grids offer a powerful API to set some ground rules on how the items should be laid out. We're using a lazy vertical grid here, but you could also choose a horizontal one. To specify columns, we use grid cells, an API that calculates the number of cells and their cross-axis size based on the available size and spacing. It can be defined as fixed, fixed size, and adaptive. Using a fixed number of columns can be handy sometimes, but not very dynamic or adaptive. Fixed size defines a grid with as many columns as possible on the condition that every cell ticks an exact size. The rest of spacing is distributed in between. Not bad, but we can do better. Adaptive defines a grid with as many columns as possible on the condition that every cell has at least the minimum size specified and remaining space is distributed evenly. That's what we want. Vertical and horizontal arrangements control how the grid items are arranged. Top, center, bottom, for vertical and a vertical grid, and start, center, end for horizontal arrangements, as well as specific spacing options for both orientations. Different combinations of these arrangements will be most noticeable visually when your items aren't taking up the full available size, as well as when you're adding items incrementally. To make the header of the screen scrollable, we add it as a separate item to the grid, but we also want it to span the entire width instead of placing it in one of the four columns. To do so, we can use the span property from the lazy grid scope, which allows us to expand just this one item at full width. Now our grid looks as intended and is dynamic. It switches between a single expanded column and four more narrow columns. But when making your UI dynamic, it's important to think about what information should be shown or hidden, depending on the available size. Here, the two add and more buttons are pushed away and hidden by the less important publish date. To ensure important information is prioritized, you can use the powerful weight modifier. You can assign weights to items you want to deprioritize when there's not enough space. So we add a weight modifier to the text composable to ensure we hide the publish date when there's no room and prioritize showing the buttons. Remaining unweighted composables in the same parent will then get prioritized and measured first, keeping their original sizing. When using text composables, think about how important the display text is and how you want to modify it based on the available space. To do so, you can define the min and max lines and the overflow strategy. Now for our final delightful touch. We want to quickly remove an item from the list by swiping it to the left. Material Components Swipe to Dismiss box does just that. We wrap our entire episode item in a swipe to dismiss box and provide the dismiss state. We disable dismissing from start to end as we only want end to start, or swiping it from right to left in this case. For the background content, we set a transparent box with a delete icon aligned to the end. And finally, we define what happens when the dismiss state reaches end to start by passing a lambda that triggers a removal action from our repository. And that's all it takes. Now when we swipe a specific episode, it is removed from the dynamic grid and the podcast queue. For more information on grids and compose, check out the documentation.